Hello everyone, this is Andrew from Galileo Sky. In our previous video, we defined four basic rules on how to work with Canvas. Make sure you watch them. In this video, you will learn about CanData reading principles. Any Can reading always uses the same action block pattern, which is shown in the order of placement in the actions list. First, init can is used. First parameter is the board rate of the canvas, in the majority of cases is equal to 250 or 500 kilobit per second. But there are some cases when different speed is used. Second setting defines whether we can send data to the canvas or we restrict this opportunity. Then we start adding can filters to the scheme. Filters are needed to work only with the identifiers we need and ignore all the rest. Each identifier uses a separate filter block. In the first field, we enter the ID of the message. As I already said, EasyLogic works with decimal values only, which is why we can remember one of the previous lessons and make the reading of the algorithm more convenient. We can create values with names as hexadecimal identifiers and record corresponding decimal values into them. The mask field determines how close should we follow the set ID when filtering the messages, or, simply speaking, do we need 100% match with the set ID or just partial one. In this case, a bit mask is used, and bits marked as one are mandatory to match. As a small example, if we need to check 29-bit identifiers where we want to check only the central part, which consists of second and third bytes, we can just set mask as 00FFFF00. At the same time, we should not forget that the algorithms use only decimal values, so we apply the mask variable decimal meaning. Last parameter in this block is the identifier length 11 bit or 29 bit. This choice depends on the ID format sent in the bus. 11 bit identifiers in hexadecimal format consist of three symbols 29 bit or fate symbols. After we set the filters for all IDs we want to read, we can enable CAN reception. For the reading itself, we use next block in the list. Its purpose is to record all data from the current received message into variables. The block looks like a condition, since at the moment of its execution there may be no message in the buffer. For that case, we follow the false line, set a small delay, for example 5 milliseconds, and return to the same block. In the block itself, we set custom variables to write the received message ID, then the message itself. Since standard message consists of 8 bytes and EasyLogic uses only 4-byte variables, the data is divided into two parts. First 4 bytes are recorded into one variable, last 4 bytes in the other. In the end, we record the message length. After we've extracted the data from CAN, we need to process them. Let's create a separate branch for each ID each starting with a condition. Pay attention that for easier algorithm interpreting, we compare the ID variable with hexadecimal value, not with the decimal value itself. These are just variables, of course, and we are in fact comparing two decimal values of the identifiers. In the branches, we add the last can reading block, can message passing. There we set what parts of the message should be recorded into what custom variables. Pay 
Pay attention that by default, the order of reading bytes in the message is set as little endian, meaning that if the value takes more than one byte, reading will be directed from the lower byte to the higher. If you need to reverse bytes reading for specific value, you can choose big endian format in the block. We record the corresponding vehicle parameters into the variables we created. With this scheme, we have set reading of specific parameters from the CAN bus into custom variables in the algorithm. In our next lesson, we'll learn how to write this data into CAN tags to send it to the server.